Shalom, welcome to our daily class in Rabbi Nachman on Patreon. Today, we're beginning a new Torah, which is always a little exciting because there are ideas out there that we never even thought of. And in Lukuti Halachot, Rabbi Natan describes that our life force is generated from new ideas. So if you're tired, do I need coffee? Or do I need a new idea? If I'm kind of out of it, do I need you know, uh, a stimulant, or do I need to think about something that I never thought of before? And what we find is that really our power is coming deep inside our soul from God, which we, we all know that we're being generated by this infinite being. But as we're generated by infinite, this infinite being, the renewal of the generation <laughs> is through ideas. So Torah Laman Hay, the 35th Torah begins, Ashrei Am Yodea Tru'a Hashem Be'or Panacha Yelechun. Fortunate is the nation who knows the shofar blast. Okay, that seems kind of self-evident or self-understood. Uh, Fortunate is the nation who knows the shofar blast, because that means they know God. They're, they're in touch with God's commands. About the end of the pasuk says, Hashem be'or panacha yelechun. King David said, God, in the light of your face, you will guide us. What does that mean? God, in the light of your face, you will guide us. So we know that no man can see God's face and live. That's a verse that God told Moses in the five books. Lo yirani adam v'chai. But on the other hand, we're saying, God, the light of your face, we will go. You will take us. So the light of the face is in Kabbalah and in Tehillim, of course, is Metaphoric language for the illumination of your intellect that shines on your face. And it's like the knowing that you get <laughs> by knowing Hashem. That if you know Hashem and that Hashem is with you, then you smile, you're happy, you know God is with me. And then your decision-making process is much simpler. And your guidance system is much more in tune. So King David is saying, fortune is the nation who knows the shofar blast. Because of that, the, it, by the light of your face, we'll be, we will be guided. We will be taken. Now that's the koteret, the headline of the Torah, that we will work from and come back to. But remember that headline because the miracle, one of the miracles of these Torahs is that they all weave together back into their headlines and back into some general ideas that govern, well, all of Jewish history. Because remember, we're here to reveal God's kingship. We're not here because, you know, well, God needed uh, somebody to, to receive his book. The only reason he gave the book was he wanted to reveal his kingship. And of course, revealing the kingship re means revealing the king and the people who follow the king. The first paragraph, Da ki teshuva hi leshuva el adavar el makom shenatam misham. The idea of tshuva is to return a thing to the place it was taken from. We were taken from a place, Gan Eden, and then we were brought here, and our whole life cycle is to get back there at a more refined and illuminated level. But it's just like if you find a lost item and you want to try to return it. You want to get it back to the person who lost it. The Zohar says that there, you know, there are 11, I believe, main cantillations, maybe 12, Cantillations are the musical notes that appear on the letters in the Torah and in Tehillim and in Tanakh. 
And those cantillations or musical notes teach you how to manipulate the sound of the words for inflection and, and also tone and even sometimes scale. So the zarka is one of them, and it's the Lushan zarka lizrok. It means to throw. So keep that in mind. He says that the, this idea of the zarka is to throw something. Where are you throwing the baseball? Well, not back to the pitcher. You're throwing it back to the factory that made the baseball. Back to the source, the makor. And this is what he says over there. In the Zohar, this darikat la atar et natilat mitaman, to throw it back to the place it was taken from. That's what tshuva is. To throw our soul back to where it was taken from. Umanahu atar. What is this place? Who a hochma? Well, that is the idea of wisdom, the power field we call the wisdom on the tree of life, and this hochma is obviously one of God's traits that He uses to. E- create and energize us. The Hokma he shorsh kaladvari. Kumashikatuv kulamba hokma sita and wisdom is the root of all things. There is wisdom embedded in everything. Whether it's you know a flower or a, a, a thumb ta- a thumb na- uh, attack or <laughs> take your pick, there's wisdom in everything if you know how to look for it. And so, if everything's made with wisdom, when we take the thing back to wisdom, we're returning it to its source, which, of course, we learned, we mentioned earlier, is that the, the source of our power. And he goes on to explain, Therefore, because Wisdom is the root of all things. We need to guard our mind, our intelligence, our wisdom from external wisdom. Now, external wisdom can be defined in many ways. But it's in, in, here in the Hasidut, it's connected to the idea of chitzoniut, the external meaning the, the klipa or the shell. Now, it's like, for example, mathematics is pure science. It's pure wisdom. It's not like philosophy, which is the wisdom of how men have viewed, processed, uh, filtered, and written about life. So, Rabbi Nachman has a lot to say about philosophers, but we're not talking about the natural sciences like studying biology or studying, because that's all really you're studying God's wisdom embedded in the plants and the animals and the ocean and the sky, etc., but here we're talking about external wisdoms that are not connected directly to God's wisdom. They've been uprooted from God's wisdom and refashioned in the minds of men. And they don't follow the principles that we're accustomed to in the Torah and the Kabbalah especially. So he goes on to tell us how this idea of the idea of these external wisdoms, like magic, for example, unholy magic, the occult, is a classic one. How to manipulate nature in a, well, demonic way, if you will. So all of these external wisdoms are mechune b'shem bat paro. Their nickname, the Rebbe says, is the daughter of Paro. Pharaoh, we know from the Midrash, was a tremendous music, magician. I was going to say musician, right? <laughs> Maybe he was. But he was a magician of the highest order. And, and the, the Torah tells us that he, he, he bathed in blood. Okay, that's one of the things you can do to get power. If you have enough, well, I don't know what, what to, enough something, but uh, desire to get power from the other side. So Par was a, a, a sorcerer, and his daughter was an extension of him, but she did tshuva. And that's why she merited to, to raise Moses. Batia, Bat Paro, was an Egyptian princess who was the one who found the straw basket in the Nile that was holding Moses. And in the end, she converted. 
Ki'ikar ahokma liknot shlemut. So now the Rebbe tells us a very interesting thing here. He tells us the, the essential wisdom that you're after is to acquire completeness, wholeness. It's not to become the smartest in math or in astrophysics or in geography, but rather it's the idea of wholeness, that your mind, your understanding of creation is complete and whole. It's not about the volume of what you know. It's more about the balance of your mind in processing reality. And, and this idea of the balancing of wisdom is the wis- balancing the wisdom, godly wisdom. But the rest of the wisdoms that are not connected to God's wisdom, they're not real. They're batelot. They, they don't give you what, you're need, what you need. And they're not really called wisdom. Ubat, this nickname, Bat Paro, for these external wisdoms, he meramezit ala It's teaching about the idea of a wisdom that's not really wisdom. Kumo Shamru Chazar, our sages taught, Evi banai merachok, bring my sons from afar. What's that verse telling us? Benotai, and my daughters. Elu guliot, these are the exiles where the children of Israel are brought back from their distant journeys. Shebeshar artsot shedatan enam yushevet alehen kibanot. And he tells us that the das, the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge of these people, of these children that are coming from faraway lands is not a settled, is not a complete and settled knowledge and awareness. The paro lashon bitul. And Paro is also connected to the idea of cancelled or nullified. Why? As it is written, Because over there it says, Don't bot in the, in the book of uh, Shemot, the book of where Moses and Paro are meeting quite often. Don't bother the nation from making their bricks. You know, with or without straw. Don't bother the nation. Tafriu, the word lafria. You hear? And, and even in modern Hebrew, is to bother somebody or something. So Pero, <laughs> he's a big bother, this guy. And Because it, it's the same letters, pay, resh, ayin. chitzoniot, and these external wisdoms, and bechinat kane. And now he goes on to tell us another idea about these external wisdoms that they're given the, the um, they're connected to the idea of a, of a tube. A kane is a, like a reed that grows in the river, has a tube that you can blow through. Okay, so these external wisdoms are like this channel, or this, this pipeline. Ki yesh kane bekedusha, because there is a holy pipeline. And these are the holy wisdoms, as it is written, acquire wisdom. And God made holy and unholy wisdoms balanced with each other, one in relation to the other. So that there's always free choice. Do you want holy wisdom or do you want unholy wisdom? Because there, just like there is a pipeline of the holy wisdom, there's a pipeline of the unholy wisdom. We don't want that pipeline because it's going to dirty up the water of the mind. As is written, Gar Chayat Kane, and the, the, the animal roars through his vocal cords. These are the external wisdoms. Crying out, come learn me, come manipulate me, come use me. 
And the Jews are a holy people. And everyone from the Jewish people, they have a portion of the upper God in their soul, which is an aspect of this wisdom. And again, the verse, Kulam Bahochma Sita, God used wisdom in the creation of everything, Val Shem Zeh Nikraim Reshit. And therefore, it is, wisdom is called Reshit, the beginning, which is connected to the root. And I want to throw out a little idea here, which I think is kind of interesting. That we say Reshit Chokhma Yirat Hashem, the beginning of wisdom is the awe of God. And the Rebbe told us here that the the tshuva, true repentance, is returning a thing to its source. So let's say a person uses his power of, of strength to do bad things. Now he needs to, the tshuva is not to throw away your power, it's to use your power for good things. Same thing with your wisdom, same thing with your heart, same thing with your body. Whatever you use, your misuse or misappropriate your soul for various activities, we need to take those powers and use them in good things, and that's the tshuva. And that's returning it to the source. And the source, he tells us earlier, he told us, is wisdom. So if we throw our wisdom to the external forces, then we need to take it back. And that's the tshuva. So, with that in mind, what about wisdom itself? The true wisdom is returning to the root of wisdom. And what is the root of wisdom? Any <laughs> Odea. I don't know. As it says in Perky Avot, teach your mouth to say, I do not know. Ezu Hacham, who is the wise person? He can see what's coming down the road. So when we turn our mind to wisdom, we're turning our back ourselves to the root of who we are. We are created with wisdom. So when I return to wisdom, I'm going back to who I really am. In other words, you already have the wisdom you need inside you. The root of your soul is inside you, and it's connected to God's wisdom, because he kulam sita. Think about this a minute. I go off to yeshiva for 30 years to acquire wisdom. And as I'm learning things, I'm saying, wow, I knew that. Wait, how, how is that? I, I knew that. I learned that. I saw that. I experienced that. Because wisdom is inherently part of us. The part, the part that is divine, that is above time, and the part that we can access and reactivate. Something to think about, my friends. Something to really think about. It's not shayach. It's not applicable to call anybody stupid. They might be inexperienced. They might be uninitiated. They might be uneducated. But stupid is kind of like, it's a very negative word, but it's connected to the idea that a person doesn't have something. He doesn't have intelligence, and it's not true. We all have innate, inherent intelligence. We just, all of us haven't revealed all of it. And that's our work here. That's part of our work, because in the revealing of wisdom, we are revealing God's wisdom. And that is part of the fulfillment of our divine purpose. And this is the idea going forward. Kodesh Yisrael Hashem Reshit. Holy, to, holy is Israel to God. Reshit, the beginning. Avab shat huladah. But when we say at the time of birth, I say mitzamtsem, our mind is contracted. In other words, when before you're born, you're not a one-year-old thinker. You're not a one-day-old dummy. <laughs> dummy, there's another word. Dummy's a little nicer, but not much. You're not a one-day-old infant. The minute before you're born, you're a full soul before you're born. But you're, when we go into the body, we get contracted. And then we have to reopen the contraction of, that happened at the, 
at the moment of birth. For a soul is a whole being that translates God's presence. But when it comes in the body, it gets locked down inside us. And so by learning, we pull it out. Please understand how important this is for yourself, for your children, for your appreciation of others, and of course, for your appreciation of the wisdom of God. And he says, Everyone's mind is contracted inside them. But when we start to use our mind in contemplation, especially in Avodat Hashem, we use the mind in serving God. A person's mind goes and gets greater. As it is written, that Homo increased his wisdom. It wasn't like he was born with a static wisdom. It was a wisdom that, a capacity for learning that grew and grew and grew. So I'm going to stop right there because he's going to go on more with these external concepts about the negative wisdoms and we'll pick that up tomorrow. But I think you can see that this is a powerful thing. This is a very powerful thing to understand that we have access to wisdom. We just have to learn how to go within. And he says, through serving God, prayer, learning, mitzvot, doing good deeds, our mind starts to open. We start to understand. And when we understand ourselves, we're understanding God's creation. It's a good deal. Have a great day. We'll see you again tomorrow on our daily Patreon classes. All the best.